Dreallday.com. All right, all right, Dre Ball and Dreallday.com. New video coming at y'all. I had to talk about this topic because I see recently I put out a video a week or two ago where I was doing my warm up before a functional training workout, and somebody asked me in the comments. They said, "Yo, do you attribute your physique to good nutrition? Do you put a lot of the, a lot of the weight of your physique on the fact that you have good nutrition and a couple people responded to his comment before I responded and they said you know Dre put out a video like three years ago where he said he eats whatever he wants and kind of eats bad food but he trains a lot and he has fast metabolism so I need to respond to that and put out a response video for that and talk about nutrition here I'm gonna talk about it here right now and first of all, those comment responses where people said that I had said that a few years ago, I did actually say that. That was in, I believe, either 2009 or 2010. I put out a video because people had been asking me about nutrition, what kind of foods do you eat? And back then, I ate whatever I wanted to. I ate fried chicken, I was eating cake and ice cream, I mean, candy, potato chips, whatever. Like, I didn't care. Whatever I wanted to eat, I just ate it. I didn't think twice about it. I wasn't reading labels. I didn't care about calorie counts or none of that. And I was in great shape then. And I'm still in great shape now. But recently, I made some changes to my uh, nutrition habits, some lifestyle changes to my diet. Lifestyle changes. That's what people always tell me when I talk to people that know more about it than me. But basically, let me give you a little overview of what my nutrition plan is like now. First of all, the reason why I made the changes is because... A few friends of mine, I, for some reason, I don't know how, how this happened like this, and maybe it was just a coincidence, but I kept coming across people who were vegetarians, vegans, they follow a quote-unquote clean eating lifestyle, which means they might eat some kind of meat, but clean type of eating, which means they don't mess with a lot of processed foods, a lot of fatty foods, a lot of stuff with a lot of uh, bad fats bad carbs, things like that. So I kept running into these people and I would have conversations with them. I asked them a ton of questions about the kind of foods that I eat and they would answer them for me because they, they would know everything about it. Like, yo, this is good, but this is not. Like, you eat that, but look at what's in it. If you, you eat this, but think about this. And everything they would tell me was making sense. Now, I'm the type of individual that I have my ideas about things in life, but if I can listen to somebody else explain something to me and break it down in a way that makes sense, I'm open-minded enough that I say, you know what, that makes sense. That's something, I can make that change. That's something different that I can do. And the funny thing is, I was talking to a, a friend of mine and a couple actually like a month or two ago. We were down at this um, this strawberry strawberry farm like all the way outside of Miami down in like Homestead, right? And we were standing in line because they got a place where you could pick strawberries. So we had all these strawberries. We put those away, but we were standing in line to actually get some food uh, from the bakery. <laughs> I was about to buy, and I ended up buying like a big ass bag of uh, cinnamon honey buns. And while we standing in line, the line was long as hell. We standing in line for like an hour. We're talking and uh, she is telling me all this stuff. We're doing all this talking about nutrition. She's telling me about why she don't use a microwave, like plasticware. We're talking about all kinds of food, like how, why they don't eat animal products, why they didn't eat animal products. And I was thinking, the whole time she's talking, my mind is turning like, you know what, this makes sense. So that's one reason why I started to think about making the change, but I didn't actually make the change then. But then I kept meeting more and more people, vegetarians. I don't eat meat. I don't eat red meat. I'm in clean eating. So I finally asked somebody, like, hey, can you give me some information on this? I'm thinking about making that change. Can you give me some information? So I had a friend of mine. She sent me an email with a bunch of links. Like she said, before you even get into this, Dre, before you go to the supermarket and start buying stuff, you need to sit down and read all this stuff that I'm showing you and understand that this is a lifestyle change. This is not something you do for a week this is not a diet this is not something you do like off and on like all right you got a big game in two days so you're gonna eat right for two days no it doesn't work like that this is a lifestyle change so you got to change up a lot of things that you're doing is a different mindset when it comes to the food that you're putting into your body as opposed to what you've been doing so that's the first thing that had to be understood then I sat and read all that stuff I sat for like two hours and read all these links all this information she had sent me 
Because the third party information kind of sinks in better. Like if I'm just sitting here telling you stuff like, yo, do this, do that, do that. You might listen, you might not. But if I can show you third party information from other people, people who study this stuff, people who do uh, research journals and things like that and can relate it to your common sense, it makes more sense to you. So even though I was listening to everything she had been telling me when we was talking personally, when she sent me that information, it sunk in a lot more because I said, okay, now I'm seeing all this information and it makes sense. I mean, I'm not no nutritionist. I'm not a health expert. I didn't study that, but I can read information. I got the common sense to understand. Like, yes, this makes sense. That makes sense. So I started to get into this clean eating thing and I went to Whole Foods you know, I was in Whole Foods, intimidated at first when I walked in because you're looking at all this stuff, you don't know what to buy, and there's so many different options. But I started to get the hang of it. So let me get into a little bit of what I'm doing myself now that I went over all that background, those of you that are still with me here. First of all, I'm trying to, I'm doing my best, and I have cut out a lot of the added sugars from my diet, which means any type of food that has added sugar, I eat unnatural sugar, I don't eat it anymore. Like this Gatorade right here, this is 64 ounce bottle of Gatorade, it's filled with water right now, that's all that's in it. I had about, I used to buy these from the supermarket, the supermarket down south is called Publix. These would go on sale, like every couple weeks they would go on sale, you get three of these for five dollars. Every time they went on sale, I'd buy like 12 of them. Because I drink these a lot. Every time I run, anytime I do any kind of outdoor workout, I drink one of these. Cause I sweat so much. It's so humid in Miami, so I sweat so much. So I will buy these, like three for five. I have, I will have a ton of these in the trunk of my car, and I have a bunch more in the house. I actually went to Publix, and I returned 15 of these a couple weeks ago. I returned about 15 of these Gatorades because I don't drink. Gatorade has so much added sugar. Now that I start reading the labels, you can see. One of these Gatorades, 7 grams of added sugar per serving, and it's 5 servings. So that's 35 grams of added sugar in each one of these. It's a very sugary drink. Even though I love Gatorade, now I'm just sticking with water. I might put some salt in it for the electrolytes. There's some other stuff you could do if you look it up. But I don't mess with Gatorade no more. I stopped messing with my cold cereals. Even just a month ago, I posted a picture on Instagram where I had like a Rice Krispies, Frosted Flakes, Honey Nut Cheerios, and like Apple Jacks, Honey Smacks, all those Raisin Bran, all the cereals I like, because I love those cereals because they like candy to me. I would sit every morning, one box of Frosted Flakes that will last me probably three days, because I eat like two, three bowls every morning when I would wake up for breakfast, so I don't mess with that no more. I don't eat Frosted Flakes. I look at the labels, anything that I buy, any kind of processed foods, is now what I've been informed, what I've learned is that any kind of food that goes through a process is manufactured, which means when you go to the store and you buy it, it's in a box or a package, that means it was processed. Something was done to that food between its natural state and getting to that store, something was done to it. And that's where a lot of chemicals get put into food, a lot of added unnatural stuff that's not actually real food gets added into the food, which number one makes it last longer so it can sit on the shelf, number two gives it certain colors, and number three gives it certain flavors. And there's other things that happen to it too. So now I try to stay away from processed foods as much as possible. So I stick to whole foods, so to speak, whole foods. So I cut out uh, any kind of white flour, white bread I don't eat anymore, any white bagels, foods that have white flour in it. Like I said, a lot of stuff with added sugar, brown sugar, caramel color. So the type of foods that I do eat now, let's get to that because it's a shorter list. I eat a lot of fruits. I'm talking apples, bananas, my favorite fruit, raisins. I get dried fruit sometimes out of the store, but a lot of times when you get the dried fruit, you got to read the labels because they put extra sugar on some of that stuff. So anything with extra sugar, I'm trying not to mess with it no more. I do my best to not mess with it. As far as the whole food that I eat, like actual meals, as far as meat goes, I'm only sticking to chicken right now. Chicken with no skin on it, boneless chicken tenderloins or chicken breasts, things like that. Veggie burgers, which is not even actual meat. It's just veggie burgers. Um, turkey burgers every once in a while, but I think I'm going to get away from turkey burgers so I can mess with just chicken. Like I said, just water is probably my, water is probably the only drink I drink now. I got a bunch of these Gatorades. I had cases of this stuff and since I had already broke the case. I think I got like maybe 10 of these, 
actual Gatorades left in my car right now. So once I get through that 10, there's just going to be Gatorade bottles with water in it that I'm going to drink. Even when I'm working out, playing in games and all that, I can just go straight off water. What else? Like I said, chicken. As far as the eating, I go with rice, brown rice, not white rice. Black beans, lentils, a lot of corn, a lot of greens. That any kind of green vegetables. Green beans, string beans, what's the other beans? Spinach, kale, lettuce, broccoli, all that green stuff. I like corn, uh, carrots are good. I still do my protein shakes with my milk now. I mess with almond milk. Almond milk or coconut milk I found is better than regular milk. Even the organic milk that they sell in the stores, even the organic milk. Almond milk and coconut milk are better because of the fact that those are coming from actual fruits. The organic milk is coming from a cow. And human beings, we are the only species that would drink milk that comes from another animal. Because I know there's cows... When they're born, they drink their mother's milk. They're drinking cow milk. And goats drink goat milk. And whatever other animal that produces milk, they drink their species milk from their mother. But why are humans, why are we drinking milk from another animal? So I don't mess with regular milk no more. Just almond milk or coconut milk. And since I don't eat cereal, I don't need much of it. So I just use that for my protein shakes. I still use my protein powders. What do I put in my protein shakes? I put a banana in there. I use oils. There are a lot of oils that I get for good fats because there's different types of fats and you got to read up on this stuff like I said. You just google this stuff. There's hundreds and hundreds of articles and blog posts. There's even whole websites dedicated to this information as far as clean eating, type of, types of good foods, how you can replace the stuff you eat now with better stuff that's better for your nutrition and health, especially if you're an athlete. And once you get up over the age of 30, as I am, you want to start paying attention to that nutrition because just working out alone, since I used to, I used to say, like, I eat whatever I want, but my workout schedule, my training regimen keeps me in great shape. And it still has even up to this point up at age 31. But I think over the next five or six years, my nutrition will either at least allow me to keep the shape that I'm in or improve it if I'm able to keep my nutrition in a better state than it was before if that makes sense so and my protein shakes I showed you our protein shake video a while back only difference between then and now is that instead of putting juice in there which comes from like packaged juice which has a lot of added sugars in it which I don't mess with no more I use the almond milk put the protein in there maybe some creatine in there some fruits they could be frozen fruit banana whatever and that's it then mix it up and that's that. If you look at the video where I made the protein shake, just search it right there on the search. Dre Baldwin protein shake. You'll see it. Everything is the same except I switched out the juice for almond milk. Everything else is the same. So I think that's all the information. Like I said, more in the clean eating. If I want a snack, I mess with peanuts, almonds, raisins, dry fruit. So no more potato chips. No more pretzels. No more snacks that come bagged up in the process. That come processed. If you ever seen the movie Super Size Me, where the guy ate McDonald's lunch, breakfast, dinner for 30 days, and when he put the French fries down for uh, he put the French fries down on the table, left it there for like a month. He came back and they looked exactly the same. It didn't decompose or nothing. So you know, a fruit or a vegetable, if you leave an apple or a banana just sitting there for a month, what's gonna happen? It's gonna get rotten. You might have fruit flies all over it. It's gonna turn brown. It's gonna stink. It's gonna be nasty because it's it's alive. It decomposes. The french fries from McDonald's, that's not real food. It's not even made of anything real, even though it says french fries. There's barely any potatoes actually in it. And when you see, they just sit there and nothing happens to them because it's not actually real. And y'all know, I don't know if many of you have seen the videos or pictures of the stuff they actually use to make the hamburgers and the chicken nuggets at McDonald's. is just this pink. It's like, uh, it's like Play-Doh, but it's pink. And then they flavor it and color it, and then it looks like you know, pieces of chicken, but it's not even real food. So a lot of y'all might have seen that, but if you hadn't, you can look it up. I ain't here to produce the links or nothing for like that. Look up the movie Super Size Me if you want to see a little bit more about the processed food industry in America. There's a lot of documentaries on that stuff, and I've been talking for like 15 minutes. It's too much talking for me, but I think I covered everything as far as clean eating. 
you know, not everything in detail because I ain't no expert, but as far as how I change my diet, how I'm getting away from added sugars I'm getting away from, red meat I'm not messing with no more, and processed foods. Those are the top three things. Added sugar, you can find out if something got added sugar by just reading the labels. You buy something from the store, look at the label, it'll say sugars. You see that sugars, then you read the ingredients. Find out what it's made out of. If you see sugar in the ingredients, that means that sugar was added to the product. Like if you buy a banana, bananas have sugar in them, but that's natural sugar. That's just part of its components as a fruit is sweet. So if you need sugar, because I love sugar. I used to eat Skittles, Twizzlers. I mean, you wouldn't believe the size of the bags of candy I used to keep. I still love sugar, so I get it from natural sources. Oranges, apples, bananas, raisins fruits basically so added sugars get rid of processed foods things that come in packages things that go through a processing facility between where they're harvested or wherever the natural ingredients come from and to get into the store if it goes through a facility and it's bagged and packaged up and preserved so it lasts longer on the shelf that's packaged that's processed food I'm trying to get away from processed food as much as possible like if I get something like a spaghetti Try to get, if you do get processed stuff, try to get the whole grain form of it. Like bread, I still like to eat bread, but I'll get whole grain bread, multi grain bread. The darker colored stuff is better than the white colored stuff. The white colored stuff has flour in it, it's bleached, and that's worse for you. White bread, white pasta, two examples. So now I mess with brown rice or whole grain pasta, whole grain bread, or even wheat bread instead of peanut butter, almond butter. And the almond butter is a crazy ripoff. It's like nine dollars for this jar, like this size. Whereas peanut butter, this size costs you like two fifty. So you gotta look out. You gotta plan ahead. You gotta kind of strategize for how you wanna do it. But I think I covered everything up to this point. If anybody has any questions, leave them for me down there in the comments. Those of you who are still with me here on this video, I do have a friend of mine who I told I want her to. Write a blog post for my site. It's going to be on dreallday.com talking about all this stuff that I'm talking about from a more expert point of view because she's been into the clean eating thing for years and years, way longer than me. I told her I wanted her to do a post on it, maybe even a video, but definitely a blog post that she's going to write up. So we just got to wait for her to get up off her ass and get it done. But I'll get that to you all when it's done. That's it. Work on your game. dreallday.com. This is Seth from Georgia. Work on your game.